So in some previous videos, you've been able to see how a computer deals with images and video. And today it's time to take a look at how a computer deals with audio. Okay, so why don't we just start with the very basics. So sound, as you probably know, is a vibration in the air. So basically particles of air, so oxygen and nitrogen molecules that are simply moving back and forth like that. That is what sound is. And when these vibrations, when this air that is moving back and forth uh, hits your eardrum, your ear will detect it and that's why you hear the sound. Now what you can do is you can take these, these vibrations and put them in a graph. So what you'll get is a graph with uh, position, physical position on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. So the position of the air particles will be going up and down, right, because they're moving back and forth. And the time will hopefully just progress like it always does. So what you get is a wave-shaped graph like this, and that is your sound wave. So the sound wave is the graphical representation of the air moving back and forth. Now then there is a very interesting device that we call a microphone. I mean, I've got one of them right here in front of me. And what a microphone is able to do is take these physical vibrations and turn them into an electrical signal with a voltage that goes up and down. And that voltage uh, going up and down corresponds exactly to the original um, air particles moving back and forth. So you now get a graph with that looks exactly the same, but now on the vertical axis you can see the voltage. Now this signal is what we call an analog signal. And an analog signal is an exact perfect representation of the original sound wave. Well, of course, the microphone will never be perfect, so it will always be kind of different, but in theory, an analog signal is a perfect replica of the original sound. So this signal from the microphone is going to reach a computer, and now we need to know how is the computer going to take that signal and digitize it? So how is it going to deal with that signal so that it can be stored to a hard drive or streamed over a network, whatever you do with your computer and audio. So the computer is going to do something that we call sampling. And sampling is of course a verb that means taking samples. And in this case a sample is a measurement of the voltage. So what the computer will do is it will measure the voltage every X amount of time. So maybe we have a system where it's every 1 48 thousandths of a second, right? Every 1 48 thousandths of a second, it will take a sample and measure the voltage at that point. And these voltage numbers will then be stored in a file because the computer can store numbers. And that is how it can digitize this audio waveform. And then later on, what it can do if you play the sound on that same computer is it will convert these voltage numbers back into an analog waveform that can be sent to a pair of headphones or a speaker, something like that. Now, there are a couple of things that determine the audio quality um, on a computer system that works like this. So first of all, the sample rate is very important because um, if you have a very high sample rate, so you take loads of samples every second, you can capture the tiniest details, kind of like taking a high-resolution picture with a camera. Whereas having a low sample rate means you're, you're going to miss some stuff if you have, a, for example, a high-frequency sound and the sample rate is too low, you're going to miss that sound completely. Uh, and the second thing that matters to the audio quality, the second thing that is a big deal, is the bit depth. So, as you can imagine, um, these voltage numbers are not going to be stored as decimal numbers, they're going to be stored as binary, so zeros and ones, because that's what computers do. Um, and the bit depth refers to how many bits of data you're going to allow it to use. So, if you say, uh, well, let's allow the computer to use uh, four bits of data for every sample, now, using four bits of information, if you know a bit about binary, you know that you can make 16 different combinations. So there will be 16 uh, different volume levels that are possible here, 16 different voltage levels, which means if you're going to take a sample right here, let's just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that you cannot really get that specific voltage, so it's going to round it off a bit, and that makes the quality worse. 
Whereas if you have more bits of data for the sample, so if you give it, if you give it six bits, then it can make 64 combinations. So there are now 64 different possible volume levels, so it can now get closer to the actual voltage. So the higher the amount of bits per sample, the better it's going to sound as well. Generally, a 16-bit bit depth is considered to be pretty good, that's what CDs use, and 24-bit is considered to be studio quality level. So there you go, now you know a little bit more about how a computer uh, deals with digital audio. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.